the relaxed life. How do you make your life more chill, Bri? So Pauline and I have been living a chill lifestyle for quite some time now. Especially the last two years or so. Yeah. It's been really chill. And today we're going to talk about, uh, no, actually the last four years. Yeah, we're going to talk about a few things that uh, you can apply to your own life, if possible, to help make it more relaxed, more chill. What, is, what does a chill life mean to you? How do we reduce stress? Yeah, how do you reduce stress? How do you reduce worry and responsibility? Unnecessary responsibility. Okay, so let, let's go through the list. What's the first one? We've got minimal expenditure. So this is a big one. Right? You want to cut down the, the cost of your lifestyle as much as is practically possible. So for us, uh, a big thing for us has been like just living in a minimalist apartment. Yeah, as small as possible. Yeah, just just the space that we need. So we've got a, a little kitchen, a shower, and a, and a bed on the floor, and, and that's good enough for us. Mm -hmm. And we also don't spend money on unnecessary stuff. We just buy what we need, and then we use it and use it and use it. As you could see yesterday with Pauline's shoe patch, <laughs> she's doing very well with using her stuff for the long haul. Yeah. And not buying stuff all the time, not using a car, because a car is... Yeah, but that's another point. We'll get to that soon. No, it's the first one. I'm sorry. Is it? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you said no. Okay, no. okay, yeah, yeah. The, the no car. Okay, so the no car goes under there too. Because fuel, insurance, and broken parts. Yeah, the bicycle lifestyle basically. We use our bicycles to commute everywhere. We use our bicycles for training. And it just saves so much money in the long term. You don't need to get car insurance. And fuck me, you don't even need to look for parking. That can stress you out too. In some cases, we would use public transport, but most of the time we use the bike. It costs nothing. Okay, next one. Good return on work time investment. Yeah, so your work time. That's something that you want to try and minimize as much as possible, especially if you don't like your job, if you're just doing it to get by. So for Pauline, she is a translator and she earns money from her social media. So that is a fantastic return on work time investment. Yeah, both of them. It's awesome. I yeah, well, work little. Huh? Well, I, I used to have fantastic return on my work time investment, but then I had to stop the coaching here in France. Because the law is different. You know? Yeah, so now I rely on Pauline. But uh, she works about two hours a day, and that's about 60 hours a month. So that's brilliant return on, on work time investment. Yeah. Okay, she doesn't earn a fortune like we, we earn what we need and we can save a little bit of money but it's not it's not a massive amount of money but how much money do you really need you don't need that much money clearly <laughs> especially if you want to live a relaxed lifestyle yeah and having too much stuff is stressful eh? yeah it is like is it going to be broken or stolen or I, I remember an earlier time in my life it was like how much stuff can i acquire and now it's like how much stuff can i get rid of like almost i feel anxiety when there's too much stuff around me i just want to get rid of it you know Okay. Then indifference. Indifference. So indifference means you don't care what other people think. And you're going to encounter quite a lot of resistance from your family, sometimes your friends, and that aren't really your friends, and society, and you want to change your life, and you just want to reduce your stress as much as possible, and not be part of this rat race, this hustle and bustle. So you have to have a, a mindset where you just don't care. Like, people can say, oh no, fuck, fuck you, what, what are you doing, and all this. And you're just like, this is my life, this is what makes me happy. And if you don't like it, that's okay, but then you can just um, disappear from their life. Yeah. I think you should care just enough so that you don't end up in prison and don't get yourself into too much trouble. Yeah, well, you're not going to end up in prison if you live the way we do. No. <laughs> so it's not about being a criminal here. Yeah. Four, second-hand second stuff. stuff, yeah. So we try and get as much secondhand stuff as we can. Mm. I mean, what's the point of wasting resources and buying new stuff when you don't have to? We've got a lot of free clothes from people that don't want them anymore and they yeah. think we don't have enough stuff and they give stuff away. If okay, I like it, I take it, nice dress. And also we apply that principle with other people too. Like there's a lot of stuff that we don't use anymore and we try and give away as much as we can. And I found that, I, I, I found that it is quite fulfilling to do that. 
it's nice. So when you get when when you don't need something and someone else really needs yeah. it, that's like the most satisfying. Yeah, it doesn't go to the trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next one. Uh, Non-attachment to stuff. Okay, so a good metaphor for this is when you've got like really long hair and you shave it off. That means you're not attached to your hair. So we're going to shave off your hair and test how attached you are to your hair really. Okay, so non-attachment to stuff, it means that uh, you could have all this stuff, but if you lose it tomorrow, you're not going to feel any, any sense of loss. Okay, so you'll, you'll be fine if you don't have that attachment to stuff. So it's not the end of the world. Like most people, if they, if they lose their computer tomorrow, they freak the fuck out and they cry for a month or some shit. So you don't want to be like that. Mm. Next one. Yeah. Gifted apartment. Okay, so this, this was luck on, in our life. Mm. Pauline's parents were kind enough to get an apartment for us. Well, they actually got it for her. It was a... Uh, it's like a donation like before they die. Like I inherited the apartment before they die. And that's really cool. Yeah. And if we didn't get that apartment, we would still be living in a minimalist place, as cheap as possible, just exactly what we need. So that is something that most of you can apply to your life. Just go with what you need. Yeah. Minimalist apartment. Yeah. And you'll be surprised. Like, you don't really need all this stuff that a luxury apartment has. You'll be happy with just having what you need. I tell them, what kind of things we don't have in our apartment? Like, no huge freezer. We no just... sauna. No, no sauna. <laughs> We have a small fridge and that's enough, for example. Yeah, and a we mini can, fridge. We can live without a fridge. And there's no, there's no bar. <laughs> no, no mini bar. <laughs> we don't do alcohol. Yeah. That's another thing you can cut from your life. Fuck the booze. You booze, you lose. Yeah, not many clothes and not many shoes. And, and not many stuff that we don't need anymore. When we don't use stuff, we give it away or recycle it or yeah, we make some space. <laughs> then no kids. No kids. This is another huge one. The best investment I made was in 2017 when I decided to get the vasectomy mm. and that has paid off big time for us. Yeah. We get to have so much stress-free sex. Yeah. And uh, saving money. Yes. Saving so stress. You save a lot of time and you save a lot of money. Yeah. And bringing kids into this world in 2020, especially with the way things are going out, oh, fuck, it's so irresponsible. I wouldn't like to be born in this world. Yeah. Well, we are there, so we make the best out of it, but I wouldn't like it. <laughs> Then gratitude. Yes, gratitude is a great way to be more relaxed, relieve stress and stay calm. Sometimes we get so stuck in wanting and desire that we forget that we've already got so much abundance in our lives and we've got got so like so much there's already just so much joy, you know, if we just look for it. Because we can be so focused on what we don't have and then we completely forget what we do have. And gratitude is an important part of just being happy and being fulfilled in general. Mm. And then no TV. Yes, turning the TV off. When it comes to TV, it just programs you to be a good little consumer. Mm. And once you turn it off, I've turned my TV off like more than 10 years ago. And it just helped a lot with my overall mindset. I'm not stuck in that consumerism mindset anymore. And also the news are so... So depressing, <sighs> so negative, so sad. And wrong, like lots of false information anyway. Yeah. It's all programming. So when you switch off the TV, you can reprogram yourself to be happy with just a little bit that you have in your life. And you can learn to enjoy experiences instead of things. So that's the nine little things that we wanted to talk about to so make your life more chilled, more relaxed. And if you have any other tips, leave them down in the comments below. How have you made your life more chilled and more relaxed? Ciao for now.